tropical climes for certain times of day. When all the citizens retire to take their clothes off and perspire, it's one of those rules the greatest fools obey. Because the sun is far too sultry and one must avoid its ultraviolet ray. <laughs> The natives grieve when the white men leave their huts Because they're obviously, definitely nuts Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun The Japanese don't care to, the Chinese wouldn't dare to Hindus and Argentines sleep firmly from 12 to 1 But Englishmen deter stars, yes sir In the Philippines they have lovely screens to protect you from the glare in the Malay states, there are hats like plates which the Britishers won't wear. At 12 noon, the native spoon and no further work is done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. It's such a surprise for the eastern eyes to see. That though the English are effete, they're quite impervious to heat. When the white man rides, every native hides in glee. Because the simple creatures hope he will impale his solar topi on a tree. It seems such a shame when the English claim the earth, that they give rise to such hilarity and mirth. <laughs> <laughs> Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The toughest Burmese bandit can never understand it. In Rangoon, the heat of noon is just what the natives shun. They put the scotch or ride down and lie down. In a jungle town where the sun beats down to the rage of man and beast, the English garb of the English sad merely gets a bit more creep. In Bangkok, at 12 o'clock, they foam at the mouth and run. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The smallest melee rabbit deplores its foolish habit. In Hong Kong, they strike a gong and fire off an noonday gun to reprimand each inmate who's in late. In the mangrove swamps by the python rumps, there is peace from 12 to 2. Even caribous lie around and snooze, there's nothing else to do. In Bengal, to move at all is seldom if ever done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday, 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 sun. Always with the same result. Someone gets killed. That's exactly what I don't understand. You'll be fighting again in a couple of days. I'm not going to stand for it. Telephone for you. All right, Jean. I'll get it. It's Arthur. He's just coming, Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Where the bloody hell are you? We've been meaning to come and see you. And... Listen, you come over here. We've got to talk. I'm on my way. Right. O.D., 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 I want you to fix me right away. O.D., I want you to fix me right away. O.D., O.D., it looks as if we're going to be lucky at last. Mm. Of course, it may be the old type. Yes, I know it may be, but if it isn't, it's maybe it. Yes? Dr. Shaw, thank God for that. Speaking. Listen, we've got a girl here who's taken an overdose of one of your firm's products. You have? Well, if she's, uh, if she's anything like as dizzy as her sister, my guess is she's mixed up grains with tablets. Good. It's called Formula 500 on the label. All right. Can you get me the antidote? You bet I'll be waiting with my tongue out. This is the sort of tonic we've been needing. All right. I, I say, tell him to handle it gently. Well, it's the goods this time. Get it. Inspector, this is my brother, Peter Brady. Oh, D. Oh, the, oh, the invisible man. How are you, Mr. Brady? Yeah! I see. Not so good. No. 
I'm sorry. Please sit down a moment. First thing Harley Street and get Sir Charles, make him drop everything. Mr. Owen, there's nothing in your son's condition that can't be handled perfectly satisfactorily by the staff of this hospital. He's my son and I decide who shall treat him. I need Owens. He's one of the few men who understands profits. You can't have Sir Charles. He's fishing in Scotland. What again? Hell and damnation. I take a week's holiday once in the blue moon, but doctors... But only a few weeks ago, we had to force him to go on a holiday. He was on the verge of a nervous breakdown through overwork. As a matter of fact, he's overworking still. My God, you are you my here! That man's been like a father to me. I'm not going to let him make a fool of himself. Unless he's gone completely off his head, I'll talk sense to him. Hello? He's gone completely off his head. I can't believe it. Your patient is dying, Doctor. Hmm, fractured pelvis, overdose, black eye. Mm, the usual. Hospitals are um, over dramatic places if you're not used to them. Emotions tend to get exaggerated. Well, this is another life to get your teeth into. Get your teeth into this. Don't joke about it. She's dead. He's amazing. He's incredible. We don't care. They say basic things, or perhaps right things. Right, right, perhaps, perhaps, or things. They say they don't care. They say 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 they of course, there are still problems to be solved. Well, what's, what's the pro problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? What, well, there's a new hospital going up somewhere else. Well, what's, what's the pro problem? But not where you'd really like it. The fact that there's no waiting list in one area doesn't help you. Uh, spot on. Our commitment to the National Health Service is second to none. Well, I certainly had an education today. This has taught me a lot. Well, 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 hospital, you know. I can't stop. It's red, it's red, it's red, it's red. I can't stop. It's red. Red is red is red. Our commitment to the National Health Service is second to none. Blood. There's no truth in it. Can I get to the phone? Yeah, yeah, I'll pay for the call. This is Brady here. For the last time, will you stop reversing the charges when you call here? Okay, all right. Yep. It's for you. Hello, mate. You found a nurse of your dreams yet, eh? No. I've still got to find out who she is. Be seeing you. 